Hello everyone. This would be my second video in the Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus series. And today we're going to be continuing a review. We stopped off last time at inequalities and absolute value. Now we're going to go into properties of exponents. We talked a bit about exponents earlier, their repeated multiplication. But now we're going to explore the properties. First one a to the power of n times a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n plus m. So for example, 2 squared times 2 cubed is equal to 2 to the power of 5. So we can prove this by just giving an example. So this is 4 times 8 is equal to 32. And we can check, yes, that works. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. Next property, a to the power of n divided by a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n minus m. This is similar to the first one. This is called a power of the power rule. And this is a to the power of n to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n m. So two squared to the power of three is equal to two to the power of six. And again, we can check that four cubed as you'll see is 64, and this is two to the power of six. A B to the power of N is equal to A to the power of N times B to the power of N. So this includes another base. So two times three to the power of two is equal to two squared times three squared. Notice that when you have a power of two, it's often called squared instead of to the power of two. You'll hear that a lot this series. So let's check it. 6 squared is equal to 36. 2 squared is equal to 4. 3 squared is equal to 9. And 4 times 9 is equal to 36. That works. Similarly, you can divide a divided by b to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n divided by b to the power of n. A specific constraint is that b is not equal to 0 because you cannot divide by 0 a to the power of zero is equal to one. You can just plug in any value into a and you'll find out that yes, it's equal to one, but a is not equal to zero because zero to the power of zero is undefined. a to the power of one is equal to a. And this is obvious from our definition of exponents. Now, a to the power of negative n is equal to one over a to the power of n. So to prove this, it would take a few other laws and a to the power of negative n. So how do we get negative n? We can do a to the power of zero minus n. That's how you get negative n. And this looks a lot like this rule right here, zero minus n. And we, can, we could prove this similar to this. And therefore we can put a to the power of zero divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of zero minus n. And a to the power of zero as we talked about earlier is one. So this is indeed true. Polynomials and polynomials follow, fall hand in hand with exponents because a polynomial is includes exponents almost all the time. A term of a polynomial is a product of number and one or more variables raised to a power. So an example of a term could be two X cubed plus five. This is not a term because of the plus, but if we were to remove the plus five, this is a term because it's a product of a number and a variable raised to a power. You can also add a y in here because it's one or more variables. The degree of a term is the exponent of a variable if there's only one variable and the sum of exponents of variables if there are multiple variables. So let's just give you an example. So back here, the degree would be three. But if we had this, it wouldn't be three because y is raised to the first power. And it's the sum of exponents if there are multiple variables, so it's four.
the coefficient of a term is the number multiplied. I'll just keep this term there, these terms, just in case. So for future reference. So the coefficient would be two in both cases. Like terms have the same variables raised to the same powers. So a like term to this one would be 5x cubed or negative 5x cubed. It has the same variable. For this one, it would be negative 5x cubed y. But a thing to note is that the term zero is always a like term to everything because it's basically zero times x cubed or zero times x cubed y. A polynomial is a term or a finite sum of terms. So it could just be this, it could just be this, or it could be this plus this. And the powers are only whole powers. You can't have square roots or you can't have negative powers. The degree of a polynomial is the greatest degree of any term. Monomial is one term polynomial, binomial is two terms, and trinomial is three terms. To add and subtract polynomials, you add and subtract like terms. So if we were to add these two polynomials, The only like terms you can see are this and this. So your answer would be yeah. We've added all the like terms together. To multiply polynomials, first you can use the distributive method. So simply, a simple polynomial would be 2x plus 3 times 5x squared minus 7. The distributive method, uh, you use the distributive property. And you can split this into two things, 2x times 5x squared minus 7 plus three times five x squared minus seven, and then you use the distributive property on both of these. The box method, let's say we have the same two polynomials. However, this time we draw a box, two x plus three and five x squared minus seven. So in the box method, we multiply each of the terms of each polynomial separately and then add everything up. So here you would get 10x cubed. Here you would get negative 14x. Here you would get 15x squared. And here you would get negative 21. And this, you can add everything together. minus 14x minus 21. And this is our answer. This is how you use the box method. And if there are more terms, you just add more boxes. FOIL method is only for binomials. And luckily, the two polynomials we multiplied earlier were binomials, so we can use those. The FOIL method is similar to the distributive method, but FOIL stands for something. F is first, O is outer, I is inner, and L is last. So FOIL. First, you multiply the first terms. So you get 10x cubed. Then you multiply the outer terms, minus 14x, 
then you multiply the inner terms plus 15x cubed, and then you multiply the last terms, minus 21. And if you rearrange it, you'll get the same polynomial as last time. Sorry, this is x squared, not x cubed. And that's the FOIL method. All these three are useful in multiplying polynomials, but there's something even more useful, special products. And if you see any special products, it would be extremely easy to multiply those. The difference of squares is a squared minus b squared. And you get a minus b times a plus b. So these are the two polynomials mul you multiply to get there. The square of sums is you square a sum. And if you expand this, you get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So when you multiply a plus b times a plus b, you get this. Square of difference is similar, except it's minus 2ab. The a squared and the b squared retain the same signs. Difference of cubes, a cubed minus b cubed, this is slightly more complicated and harder to recognize. It's a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. Sum of cubes is a cubed plus b cubed. You just reverse the signs of this and this. You get a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. It's extremely important to memorize these or write these down in your notes. To divide polynomials, you use long division. And I'll quickly show you an example. So let's say we have 5x squared minus 7 and 2x plus 3. Long division is more fun than it looks because you have to multiply. It's basically like integer long division, except you use polynomials instead. So you want to multiply 2x plus 3 times something to get into here. It's 2x because first you want the x squared. So you need to multiply by x. And then you want to multiply the coefficient by something such that it's less than 5. And the greatest number you can do is two. So two X times this, surely enough, you get this. However, we run into a problem here. There's still an X squared and we have to get rid of that. To do that, we have to multiply this by 0.5x. Sure, you could have done multiplied by 2.5x in this step itself, but this is to explain why you need to do that. So when you multiply by 0.5x, you'll get x squared plus 1.5x. And if you subtract, you get negative 7.5x minus 7. When you um, multiply to put in here, you realize that, again, it's not simple. 7.5 divided by 2 is uh, 3.75. So you need to do minus 3.75. And you get minus 7.5x minus 11.25. This is gonna go off the screen, but when you subtract it, you get 4.25. And this is a remainder because you can't get two X plus three into that anymore. The remainder is what's left over. So our final answer is 2.5x minus 3.75, remainder 4.25. Maybe this wasn't the best example, but this covers all the concepts. So factoring is the opposite of multiplying polynomials. It's finding polynomials whose product is the given polynomial. And the factors are 
the things that you multiply to result in the given polynomial. A prime polynomial cannot be factored. So the factored completely, the point of factoring is to write the polynomial as a product of prime polynomials. The greatest common factor is one method. It's a monomial that divides all terms. So this example, 6xy squared plus 8xy minus 12y. First thing you notice, there's a y everywhere. So you can get the y out, but that's not all. You notice that all the coefficients can be divided by two. So you take out a two y, you get three x y plus four x, not eight x, minus six. And as you can see, there's nothing else you can take out of it. So this is how you factor one way. Another way is factoring by grouping and you split the polynomial into sums that have a GCF. So it's an extended greater, greatest common factor. So here, it's pretty obvious here because this has a two, this has a two, this has an A, this has an A. So if you split it up, you get two Y squared plus minus two Z plus A Z minus A Y squared. And if you factor these, you get two Y squared minus Z plus A Z minus Y squared. But we're not done here because this isn't a product of polynomials. We see that this is y squared minus z and this is z minus y squared. So what we could do is to negate it. If we write negative a here, then we'll negate this and we'll get y squared minus z in this parentheses. And you basically anti-distribute it and you'll get y squared minus z times two minus a. This would be our final answer. Finally, the FOIL method. You use FOIL in reverse, and this is mostly guess and check. So this is for trinomials. First thing, there's a GCF. Never forget the GCF. Now that we have this, you know the factors of six are either six and one or three and two. So it's either six X times plus something times one X times something, or three X plus something times two X plus something. And we guess and check now. Five can only be five and one, but it's where to put the five and where to put the one. Notice it's negative five. So it's either five, negative five, one, or five and negative one. So, Let's just try this first. If we put in negative five here and one over here, you'll get seven X minus five X, which is two X. That doesn't work. If we put five negative one in here, you'll get five X minus six X, which is negative X. So this doesn't work. It has to be the second one. If you put negative five here and one here, you'll get negative 10x plus 3x or negative 7x. This is perfect, it works. So the answer is 3x minus five plus one. FOIL is pretty on, it's pretty tedious. So in later lessons, we'll show you better ways to factor, but for now, just use FOIL. Rational expressions. So a rational expression is a quotient of polynomials. And the domain is the set of uh, real numbers for which the, an expression is defined. So the domain of any expression is when it's defined. For rational expressions, it's when the denominator is not equal to zero. The lowest term of a rational expression is the GCF, is when the GCF of an, the numerator and denominator is one. So if we had something like this, it's not in lowest terms because there's an X on both. So to get it to lowest terms, you cancel off the X and you get two Y over three.
like I said, you cancel off the C. To multiply rational expressions, you multiply the numerator, then you multiply the denominator. For example, 2 third times 5 sixth is equal to 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 6 is 18. And now we can get it to lowest terms. It's not in lowest terms yet. There's a 2. So we can cancel off the 2 and get 5 ninth. In division, you take the reciprocal of the second one. You flip the numerator and denominator, and then you multiply. So if it was 2 third times divided by 5 sixth, divided by 5 sixth, you would switch it to times 6 over 5. And then this would be 12 over 15. But if you write in lowest terms, you get 4 fifth. That's our final answer. Addition and subtraction is slightly more complicated. You find the LCD, least common denominator. And it's the least common factor of the denominators. So an example would be 2 third plus 5 sixths. Here, the least common factor of the denominators is six. So if you convert them both into um, a denominator of six, you get four six plus five six is equal to nine six or three halves. Subtraction is done the same way. Complex fractions, and this is a quotient of rational expressions. So an example would be one plus one over X. That's a rational expression over two over X plus one, something like that. And to solve it, you combine the rational expressions in each and then divide. So back in our example, first in the numerator, you get x plus 1 over x. And this is because we write 1 as x over x. And x over x plus 1 over x, since they have the same denominator, you don't have to find an LCD. You just add them, and you get x plus 1 over x. On the denominator, it's one rational expression. So now you divide. You get x plus 1 over x divided by the denominator. So it's multiplied by x plus 1 over 2. And this just turns out to be x plus 1 squared over 2x. You can, um, you can expand the sum of square of sums if you want, but it's better to leave it this way in case something can be factored out. Radicals and rational exponents. So a rational exponent is when you have one over n in the power. So if you have a is equal to b to the power of one over n, where n is even, then a to the power of n is equal to b. But if n is even, then a has to be greater than zero and b has to be greater than zero. On the other hand, if n is odd, you get the same thing, but there are no sign restrictions. A can be anything, B can be anything. It's important that you know this because you just take both sides to the power of n and by the properties we learned earlier, you get A to the power of n is equal to B. There's also when you have B to the power of m over n. And this is similar, except it's A to the power of n is equal to B to the power of m. You take both sides to the power of n again, and you get this. Now, similarly, if n is even, both, are, both have to be positive. But if n is odd, there are no sign restrictions. Radical notation is nth root of a. And this is basically the same thing as a to the power of 1 over n. So for example, 
cube root of five is equal to five to the power of one third. The most common radical is square root. Like we have square, we have square root, but square root is special. You don't need the two over here. So this is the symbol for square root. Square root of n would be n to the power of one half. Similarly, the nth root of a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of m over n. Some rules for radicals. These are remarkably similar to rules for exponents. We have the product. We have division. We have power of roots. Not exactly power, but combined roots. Root of a root. And here, this one's different. Nth root of a to the power of n is equal to absolute value of a, if n is even. Why is this? Because remember, we made the condition that a and b have to be greater than or equal to zero. So the only way to make sure is that this has to be absolute value. Like we said in the previous lesson, absolute value is always greater than or equal to zero. If n is odd, it can just be a because there are no sign restrictions. A simplified radical is a radical in its simplest form. So the radicand has no factor raised to a power greater than or equal to index. So for example, third root of 32 is not simplified because 32 is equal to two to the power of five. So it'll be three, third root of two to the power of five and five is greater than or equal to three. Radicand has no fractions. No denominator contains a radical. And exponents in radicand and index have a GCF of one. So even um, sixth root of x cubed is still not in simplified form. And all indicated operations have been performed if possible. So if we have two radicals like this, you have to multiply them and then it's a simplified form. But if you have something like this, cube root of two times square root of three, it's not possible to multiply them given these rules. So this is still in simplified form. To add and subtract, you can only add and subtract like terms. So square root of two plus three root two works, but when you do minus cube root of two, that does not work. Like I said before, like radicals have the same radicand and index. So square root of two and cube root of two are not like. Square root of two and square root of three are not like. To multiply, you use the distributive property. And it's similar to polynomials. If you have something like this, you just multiply one by one and you get this. The conjugate is a special expression that cancels out the radical. Root A minus root B and root A plus, plus root B are conjugates. So if we have this expression, its conjugate would be this and vice versa. Using difference of squares, we see that the result is a minus b, which doesn't have any radicals. To divide, you divide the radical expressions using the rules below, um, before and then simplify. Special cases when you have to rationalize the denominator or numerator, and this is when you cancel out the radical there and you use conjugate. So for example, if we have two over root seven minus one, you multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. You can't just multiply the denominator because then you won't be multiplying by one, you would change the fraction. But here, 
you're basically multiplying by one, but in a different form. And this is equal to two root seven plus two in the numerator. And then using difference of squares, we get seven minus one or six. Then you can simplify this to root seven plus one over three. Like I said, you multiply the fraction by conjugate over conjugate. That's it for the review of algebra two and pre-calculus. So I'll see you next time. Bye.